All righty. So now we're ready. Now, Father Rich told me that we are on, uh, we stopped at uh, chapter 15, verse 11. So, yeah. so let us go back. We were talking about the vine and the branches last week. Remember that? And he went over uh, about God being the vine grower and then Jesus the vine and we're the branches. Yes. We did a we did a lot of talk on that. So do we need to go back over that one? Um I'm okay with it. I'm good. Okay. So he okay. okay. So we'll start at eleven. Start 11. Yeah. We want to start at 10. Let's start at 10. I think 11 goes along with 10. Uh, anybody want to read? Um, anybody want to read? <laughs> I'll read. Okay, that's good. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have, as I love you. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. All right, we'll stop right there and start to reflect on what we just read. Um, what's really reaching out of me right now is that, isn't it, uh, that this is Valentine's week and this falls right in with that, doesn't it? Yeah. Minus the chocolate. Minus the chocolate, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're talking a lot of. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's all these, it, it's a list of things that is a result of your obedience um, to God, to, to the commandments. If you, if you abide in his love, um, you will have, you, all these things will give you eternal life. If you abide in his love, if you, remain full of joy if you love one another um jesus will be a friend to you your fruit will remain and your prayers will be answered so all these things are results of obedience to god okay it seems to focus around that one four letter word that everything he's talking about is love. Has to yeah. do with love. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's why they say this is the greatest commandment of all is to love one another. And it's like you say, it's a perfect time. The perfect time for that. Yeah. Yes. And he's reiterating this to his apostles. He's still talking to his apostles, wanting them to make sure that they understand this great commandment. Okay. And the thing about love is it's defined in so many ways 
I still can't fully define it, but it it's it's projected and it's received in so many different ways. I don't I don't know what the full definition of love, and I and I believe I never will know the full definition of love because I'm always working on God's love. So I always see something different in what somebody does for me that shows love and what sometimes I unexpectedly do for others. Hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. I look at it from the angle of how we talked about the connection between God and Jesus. And now Jesus is giving them the roadmap or the blueprint of staying connected to him. So we're going into that second connection between Jesus and his disciples or Jesus and us. And keep my commandments, uh, the joy that he's saying that may be in them, that it be complete. And I see the word remain. To me, those are those are the connection words. And so it looks like now we're into the establishment of the connection between Jesus and the disciples in that relationship. And other than that, like I said, the blueprint looks like he's given them everything. Keep my commandments, love one another, that type of thing. So that's the way I look at it. Mm. Yes. Wow. Can't hear me. I'm steady talking and I'm muted myself. I like, I like the fact that he is putting a lot of emphasis on love, but I like what Michael said. He's given us a blueprint. That makes so much sense in my head when you said that, Michael. Um, Yes, a blueprint, and he's saying a whole lot of stuff. So you know, even in this one, uh, this little, what seven little paragraph sentences that we've read, he is saying a lot of things in here that we need to pay attention. Starting with ten, let's start with ten. Let's go with verse ten at the beginning. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just that. Just that. I mean, that makes you think right there. That's what I call that connection word. Right. And and I've seen it like twice. I was trying to see how many times he said that. So it looked like it's twice between 10 and through 17. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at that, if you keep my commandments, I think that's important right there. He's in, he keeps saying that just as I have kept my father's commandment and remain in his love. So tell me just in that one little sentence, how does that speak to you? I mean, how does that one little sentence speak to you? If you keep Please. my commandments, you will remain in my love. It makes me think about the vine and the branches that we just talked about last week. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the sentence and the last part, there's connection there, right? Yeah. He wants us to me, Jesus, God is telling us he's just like us. I mean, Jesus is telling us he's just like us. He wants us to remain in his love just as he remains in his father's love. And, and how, did, how did he do that? I mean, how, how does we and he do that? Well, it looks like if we do the commandments, he'll listen to what his father is telling him, which I believe is talking about his crucifixion. Okay, so we don't know that yet. He's telling us, though, that whatever, what his commandments, just like the father's commandments, what did the father want him to do? I mean, what is the father saying? As he was here walking this earth, he has done everything that his father has told him to. Isn't that what this is saying? Yeah. That he, as he walked the earth, he has done everything that God has told him to do. 
now he's telling us to do the same. I mean, don't you see that in this little, this little two sentence verse here? That he wants us to do the same as he did. God sent him, as Father Rich always says, to come here and save us. So he came here for our salvation. Uh, not to die. Yeah, we ain't got to that part yet. Not to die, but to come here to save us. In order to do that, he's come here to, and he has given us instruction over, as we have read this Gospel of John, he has instructed not only the, the apostles, but he has instructed us along the way. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, we, we have to demonstrate our discipleship. We have to demonstrate it. And what are the commandments that he's given, looking at, at it scripturally, what are the commandments that he's given his disciples thus far? Just keep that in mind. So, Yeah, yeah and that's the it, thing for me, because with the Ten Commandments, when you take them apart, is one of the Ten Commandments, thou should not lie? Mm. Yes. You know, I don't know whether he's talking about the Ten Commandments. You know, this is a very tricky thing here because right. he said my commandments. Right. I, you, know what, what, you know what yes. kind of tripped me up, though, because that, that has an S on it, right? Right. And right. then if you go to 12, it says, this is my commandment to love one another as I love you. So, right. so, so right. I'm thinking as, as they, as they are traveling along, he's showing them a lot of things, right? Right. He's healed a lot of people. So, so could that be what he, well, I can't say if that's a command. Remember we kept, we were getting to, uh, Father Rich would say, this is a command. You know, he asked us the question, is this a command or, is this uh I forget the other thing, but yeah, was, again it's it's what he of, models, but I'm yeah. I'm trying to think of what what he's commanded them because the cat it has that S on it. That's what's tripping me up. But so okay, we just read before this chapter, we went over the Beatitudes. Remember? Okay, okay. He, he did bless it all the poor and he did all those. Um, and then you did mention along the travels that he did. Did he feel did he feel the hungry? I think I think he wanted us, I think that was one of his commandments to feed the hungry. Um, did he help people along? I mean, did he heal the sick? I mean, all those things that he did, I think he wants us to do. Well, the Ten Commandments itself, one of them is to love one another as I have loved you. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. I but, and then that's I that keeps getting repeated. Those commandments, though. I, I'm not I'm not sure that he's saying that when he um because well, he's God, saying if, if because you God keep, put those commandments there, but he says to keep my commandments. And then right. the second sentence, it says, I have kept my father's commandments and remained in his love. So what commandments did he keep that belong that he, that his father gave him? And I'm not, and I'm, and I'm sure it wasn't the 10 commandments that he gave the Hebrew people way back when. Well, why not? Because the father is the one who wrote those 10 commandments. Exactly. He was the one who wrote them. But are you sure is that what he's talking about? Or is he talking about the journey that he had with the apostles? Well, that, that's the way I feel that that's he's been referring. Yeah, this is like Michael said, it kind of trips you up a little bit when you look yeah, at it. It does. Okay, we don't walk through John. We're in the 15th but, chapter. And all of we already know what John has done along the way. Wait a minute, Loretta. What John has done along the way is trip us up. That is what he's done <laughs> along this way. So what, what we see here is normally not what he really means. Hmm. So we already know that. He wants us to figure this out. You know, this one little sentence here, you keep my commandments. Now, we have been through this whole book of John, and we're in the 15th chapter, and <laughs> we are acting like we all got Alzheimer's. <laughs> and we no. don't remember <laughs> what we went through. Well. But I wanted, 
But I wanted to say, what wasn't one of his commandments to the disciples was to go and baptize? Mm -mm. I know he didn't do baptisms. Who did baptisms? I don't remember him doing that. Um, On the Baptist. He didn't I thought he said to baptize, the, to, to go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I can't get that in my head. I, I believe that was, I don't know. Help me out, somebody. I'll think that would happen. I, know, I can't remember. I believe she's referring to John the Baptist. That's what I'm thinking. And yeah. I don't know where you are. I don't remember Jesus doing, he got baptized, but I don't remember him officially uh, doing that. If he baptized somebody, he told them to go and get in the pool so they can get healed. Uh, I don't remember yeah. him just doing that. I think to me, the baptism comes basically after him, but. Mm. I don't know if he baptized, but I remember reading where, oh, okay, um, that he commanded them to go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son. Loretta, oh, write that down. Write that down next week. That write is correct. Down. The words that but, you're saying are yeah. correct. But are we, are we speaking? Hold on a second. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm sorry. What, I'm sorry. What did you What did you say? Um, I said write it down so we can put a pen in it. <laughs> you You did Harper on his baptism, so write that down. <laughs> I don't know where I. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put a uh, pen in it. <laughs> okay, so so are we talking about in context of? of the gospel of John, what we've traveled through thus far, yes, or, or we are we moving been. beyond that? Because, no. I mean, if we're looking at what we've read so far. We gotta stay in John, because this, John is writing different than the other gospels, right? Right. We learn. Right. Right. And he is, he is more, um, he, he's writing for an audience who already know the story, but he's okay. telling it a different way. He's telling a way that, that makes us think about what has happened. And what Jesus said, but he's saying in a, in a way that he wants us to, like you said, is it sometimes is com confusing to get. It's mind boggling sometimes because sometimes we got to pull out what he really, really means. Yeah. You know what he really means. If you keep my commandments, now if he said God's commandments, I would have gone back to the Ten Commandments. But he's not saying that. He didn't write the Ten Commandments on the stone. We know God is He. He is God, but he, in that particular case, he didn't write the Ten Commandments on that stone. So what commandments are you talking about? Okay. What is a, what is a commandment, right? So so again, looking in the, in the context, but from skimming through so far, I mean, the one central theme was always about love. Now, now could he be, could he have been commanding or making commands of them through through the things that he did? Right, the healing, the the uh, uh, you know, the back and forth between sure, the conversations that they conversations that I have. Um, yeah. the conversation you mentioned the word love. The conversation right. yeah, with Peter. Peter, do you love me? I mean, tell me, do you love me? You know, I mean, very very implicit about did Peter love him? And you know. Well, is that we we talked about the the God giving us the Ten Commandments, yes. God gave us Ten Commandments. Okay, so in verse ten, it is saying, "If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments." And so, this is what, he is, is keeping... what, are, what is his Father's commandments? What does Jesus come to do here? That his father ordered him to do. That's confusing. Say, say that again, D. What did he come here to do? What did the, what orders or commands that his father gave him to do? He gave him a specific job to do when he got here. Come here on earth and save. I just yeah. I just read that to lay down his life. Wait a minute, I just saw that. Uh, Okay. We're still arguing about that point. Gretchen is now on, on the call today, but still arguing about that point. Whereas Jesus came 
he didn't, uh, Father Rich says he didn't come to die. No. And that thing no, 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 everybody it. else says he come to die. That was his job to come and save the world. But he didn't have to die to save the world. That's what he said. No. He, right. he he had Father, Father, Rich, Father Rich said he came to save the world. Save. Save. Well, right. And it he what the result of that is he died, he died because right. we had evil in the world, which is still in the That's world. Right. And people had free choice. We did spend a lot of time on free choice. Remember that? Esther's right. not, yeah. not on a lot to call today either because she had a lot to say about free will. Free will. That's what put Jesus on the cross. It's because people and their free will, they chose to kill him. They didn't have to. And he mentioned that a whole lot of times. And we'll get back to that coming up when he's in that garden. He didn't, they didn't have to kill him when they took him to jail. They didn't have to do that. No, yes. That's you know, so his commandment to me, and we could, you know, what that is, is that God sent him here to collect souls and save us. Save yes. us. And that's what he did with all the actions that he did. And he talked about uh, you know, last week about, you know, you. You're showing people what God has done through these miracles, and people still in their free will mind don't believe what it is. But God said, He's saying to us, the things I've taught you and asked you to do, I want you to do so that you will remain in my love. So if we don't do those things that He He asked us to do, like He went around and showed us how to take care of people, He showed us how to care for people. Exactly. In his way, he showed us how to care, just as I have kept my commandments and remained his in his love. So let's let's go on and move on because maybe when we get down a little further, we can go back and all that will make sense in our head and, and connect the dots. But sometimes he says the way John writes about Jesus is that Jesus never says anything straight out to me. I'm just saying it to me. He never says anything, he never says what he means. Because I would say, if he was sitting in front of me, I would just say to him, why don't you just say what you mean? <laughs> and stop going around these riddles and making me try to figure this out. So let's go to 11. He says to this, and, and y'all talked about, uh, Loretta talked about this. So I told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And 12 said, this is my commandment. Love one another as I had loved you. So this is my commandment. Maybe that's it. That's it. And that's how something much he's put upon us, not God. This is something he's telling us now. But what is love? Yes. Yeah, what does that, that look like? That was the question that love is yeah. a feeling that you never felt before. <laughs> now and how did Jesus show that? So, you yeah. know, that we had to look at that whole thing. All of that equals love, you know, the compassion he had for people, the healing, right? The, the, the righteousness when he confronted uh, the, the ways of the Pharisees when he got into those conferences. Conversations. The woman at the well. The woman at the well. When he, um, the woman he wasn't supposed to talk to. The woman at the well, because she was, you know, she, she was a different race and he wasn't supposed to talk to her and and what yeah. and, uh, and remember remember too he uh and i don't know if it was father rich or in our reading but but and it might have been in some of those reflections i've been looking at but it said that jesus we might perceive his uh relationship to the pharisees as adversarial but he was kind of like scolding them in love right yes so it, it wasn't always a thing, you know, he might have got frustrated, but I'm pointing out things to you, Pharisee, because I love you as well. Oh, that was that is so profound. Yes, that is it. Yes. It, you know, it may not look like that. If, I mean, oh, that's so point on is that all through this time when we was having this conversation and they were trying to trick him up and he was trying to help them along the way and they weren't seeing what we talked about, the spiritual side. They kept seeing their earthly thing. And I do want to get back into what is love. 
because let me say this. I can tell you right now. I can show you right now. I love a cup of tea in the morning. Tell me, is that what Jesus is talking about? We have Valentine's Day, Tuesday. If you said, I love roses or a box of chocolate, is that what Jesus is talking about? This is a word that people use frivolously all over the place. We see it every single day. We see it every day. And we see people uh, on the TV talk about love. Love everything. Love my car. Love, I mean, love this soap. Love this food. Is, is that what Jesus is talking about? No. I mean, no. you try to find love. And is it all the stuff or is it something else? It's, 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 it's what that you and more. have to do to inherit eternal life. Well, isn't that the goal to to inherit eternal life? But doesn't the word doesn't the word love have a degree? It, it, there's a, there are degrees of love. Some of it is super clear. Some it's of just, it is, you know, it's some is tangible, so some is intangible. So there are different great degrees of love. Yes. Or maybe we're just using it wrong. I mean, maybe we're using it wrong, the word wrong. Uh, when I looked it up, um, one of the things that we taught. Uh, when I was seeing the young people, we use the word agape love. Agape love is God's love. Yes. Have you, have you ever heard of that? It's God's love, which means that it will bring you totally joy. And that is the word that he is totally talking about in, where am I? Oh, and um, where am I? 11. I've told you this, so my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And what does that joy mean? I mean, you can love and joy. Those two words that sometimes don't go together. You can love a person who beat the heck out of you, but mm -hmm. you come telling somebody you love, does that person bring you joy? Well, I think love and joy, I think if you put it another way, like it says, we'll always have joy. Mm -hmm. So I won't match love with joy, but you said, but we'll, uh, we can always have joy, but we won't always have happiness. So you can still say, you know, I have love for you, but I'm not happy. Yes. I'm not happy for what you are, what you do, what you say. But does yeah. that, uh, being unhappy, how can that unhappy bring you joy? How nope. can you be unhappy and joyful at the same time? To me, love is joy. That's that's what I said. Well, that's what I say. Love is joy, but you don't always have happiness. You can always have joy, right. but you don't always have happiness. No. So he's telling us in eleven. I told you this so that my joy may be in you. The happiness, the joy, and the love that he has for us has to reside in us. Maybe in and you. For us to be a complete person. Maybe. I think it goes to what you said, D, D that his, his love and joy is the agape kind of yeah. love and joy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could that but joy is, be himself? Because he is the total package, well, so to speak. Have him, you do have joy. Right. And then your joy might be complete. Complete is wholeness. Right. right? Yes. So, so if you have Jesus, right, he is the total package, right? So... If you have me, disciples, your joy will be complete. Complete. That makes you whole, a wholeness. So, I, I, let's play with that word a little bit, joy. So, what gives you joy? Think about Jesus. Jesus. Love, love gives you joy. Love, love of what? And what is Jesus? Love of what love. gives you joy? Is that what we perceive what? makes us feel good. Think of something. Think love of something God. that you do. Think of something that you do that brings you joy, but also you can invoke the word love. Okay, let's I'll take. Pray. You said you love you. You love that cup of tea, right? Right. What do you love about that cup of tea? Well, I. That's a good question. What I love about that does it? It it makes you feel good as it goes down. It warms your stomach. It warms your throat. Right. And it it gives you. It tastes good. And it wakes me up. And it wakes you up. So those things connotate good, right? Yeah. And it makes you feel good. 
makes you but feel if it was that cup of tea would you lose your joy right no no I wouldn't lose but, joy. But at the same time I don't that know cup of tea I don't know this held joy. us up because you had right, to go right. get that tea the, the, the yeah, joy I had to go with my tea. tea yes that's right it makes us feel good right <laughs> but let me let me let me say this I'm trying to think about how to get this joy into okay that cup of tea put some sugar in it <laughs> I mean, sort of like what Jesus is trying to tell us that when we go out, say that one of the things I love doing that brings me joy, and I can't do right now, is to, at Christmas time, I used to love going down to the hall and helping packing the bags for Christmas. It yeah. gives me such a joyful feeling to know that I'm helping someone else. I think those are the feelings that Jesus is trying to tell us. It made, it made me feel so joyful being there, but also it also helped me to, um, to appreciate what I have because I was helping somebody else. You understand but what I'm did saying? You, but with that joy that you had in doing that, did you actually love doing yes. it? Yes, I did. That's what love. Yes, I loved doing it and it gave me joy. But yeah, the, exactly. But the joy came from also being able to help somebody else. Help someone, yes. Help someone else. It's sort of like when you are taking care of um a person and you know how you myself I had to let go. You know Regina know me very well. Such a control <laughs> freak that I am. And now I had this back surgery. It's a lot of stuff I can't do anymore. But my husband has been here. He has been, I mean, I can't even, he, I would tell you he's been a saint. He's done everything for me. It used to be, I used to do everything. Now he's doing washing. I, all I do is sort my clothes and he puts, he puts them in a washing machine. He's cleaning the house. He's doing everything. He's doing just about everything. This morning he came up before my bath and made me a breakfast sandwich. I mean, things that I used to do for myself, I can't do it, but it, and I felt guilty. And, you know, my oldest daughter is doing that too. And I felt guilty because I was so used to doing stuff myself. And sure. now I'm in a position that they got to help me, right? Mm -hmm. And I would try to, you know, when I, my daughter heard me grunting going down the steps, she said, Mommy, where are you going? What are you doing? And I'm saying, I bother you too so much that I feel guilty about it. But they are loving being able to help me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have to understand sometimes out of their love, they get joy trying to help me. There you go. You know, they in love and then, with and you. Then, uh, D, don't you feel like uh, sometimes that you have peace within yourself and knowing that you have a supportive family? Oh, that yes. That does. Yes, that does. Yes, so that, that in itself brings you joy. Yes, that, that really does. I mean, and I can't get over, you know, sometimes it just... Um, makes me want to cry because it's to the fact where my husband told me a couple of weeks ago that he thinks of me more than he thinks of himself. Mm. And that just broke my heart. I was like, oh my God, he thinks of what I need before he can think of what he needs. That's and, love. Huh? Yeah. That's love. Yes. And, it and, and if you look down here, 13, no one has greater love than those to lay down yes. one's life, life. Yes. one's friends. Yes. That's so that's don't it. feel guilty anymore, D. I'm love. trying to get over that. I'm trying to get over that. <laughs> you know, I feel like, you know, it, you know, the things go, you know, like, uh, you know, when you've been right a long time, things go back and forth. And you know, Valerie knows that too. You know, things go back and forth. You know, sometimes you do things for them and, you know, they do things for you. And I guess it's my time. You know, well, well, time watch, time. watch this too. Can you, can you see it in a sense too that, that for the good that you do, that that's your reward coming back to you? Can yeah. you see it in that sense as it's well? A, that's called a blessing. Right, right. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, receive it. Yeah. 
receiving. The blessing goes both ways because it's the blessing right. of the person receiving and yeah. the blessing of the person giving. Yeah. Giving. Right. The blessing goes both ways. You're both blessed. Right. Yes. So that is the that's the joy that gives you peace, knowing that somebody loves you and you love that person. And you know, and that's what you want to do. But even in, in what Jesus is saying in this sentence is that also that love we have to have for one, not just the people that in, in our immediate life, but all, all people, all people. It's not just some people. We have to love all people. Carla, are you up to say something? Because you're coming up on my um, on my computer as the next speaker. I, no, I was thinking about when I was taking care of mama the last five years of her life. And I remember when I was bathing her one time and she looked at me she, and she said, I, you're not supposed to be bathing me. I said, well, why not? You, mama, you can't anymore. I said, and besides, if I remember correct, when I was a baby, did you not take care of me and do for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was my job. I said, well, guess what? The jobs have been reversed. Mm -hmm. I said, just like you took care of me when I couldn't, mm -hmm. I'm now taking care of you. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and that's, like they said, it's a blessing. It, but sometimes you can't wrap your head around, you know, why God has put you in this position. Like your mother is saying, you know, I can understand how she's feeling. You know, it's like she can't, she wants to, but she can't. Right. And, you know, and she don't want you to feel uncomfortable. And you're saying, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm doing this because I love you and you've done it for me. And this is all Jesus, you're saying everything that we're saying exactly what he's saying in 10. You know, that's exactly what he's saying in 10. <clears throat> if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love as I've kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. That means that as our father has taken care of us, we have to also do the same thing that he's done. It mm -hmm. does a reversal, just like you all said. It just you know, comes around. And with that, um, he, he's telling, oh shoot, what did I do? Stay still. He's I telling us so that we can have the joy that everybody's talking about, the joy that we get from loving another person, but also the joy that we get fulfilled because we're doing that. Yes. So. And remember, this is this is what Jesus is is modeling before them. Right. Right. Um, you know, remember the washing of the feet. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. We was at. We just left that as he. Um, he washed their feet and, and Peter didn't want him. And, and Carla going back to your mother and myself, Jesus washing their feet and Peter said, oh no, you're not supposed to be washing my feet because he felt like Jesus was above that because he was the, the teacher, the leader. You know, why is he doing this? Let me wash your feet. And, you know, and Jesus gave us something to do. Is that a commandment? Is another instruction to do? What did he say that? What did he say after... He washed their feet. You do the same have, to one know, another. He just their servant. I have not come to serve. I have not come for you to serve me, but me yes. to serve you. Yeah, he was a servant. So he's giving us those commandments, telling us in those examples. I think that's what he's saying to us. Those examples <laughs> that he's done. You know, even though uh, like Michael was saying it. It didn't seem like some of them were commandments, but commands. But I, in a way that when he said do it, that's a command. Right. That's what I was talking about. Yes. Yeah. When he used the word do it, that's a command. So uh, that's what he said. Now in 12, let's go to 12. This is my command. Love one another as I love you. We talked about this is his command. And I don't know whether that's, this don't have an S on it like the rest of them. This is the one command. Is this, I think this is the one that's above all other commands is given. Yes. And why do you think that? Why would this be all over the other? Because that encompasses them all. Explain. Well, I think it's related and I have to, my mind keeps going back to the 10 commandments. 
that Jesus is the commandments or the command is related to the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. Well, let's say this. Let me give you another story. There was a rich man who came to Jesus and asked him, how can I have eternal life? And what did Jesus tell that man? I don't know exactly what he has and follow him. Yeah, before that, before that, before he told him that. He he wanted to go back down and warn his brother what to do. No. That's what the man wanted to do. He he asked him about, did he know what the commandments were? Do you know what you're asking of me? First of all, he talked about the commandments. He asked Mm -hmm. him to go and live the commandments. And the man said, that's what I do. He already did that. Right. And then he came back and said, give away all his stuff. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus referred to the Ten I just wanted that sentence to come out because he did refer to the Ten Commandments. But mm-hmm. those Ten Commandments did not give that man eternal life. He said he was already doing that. Right. Jesus began to take another step, and he wasn't willing to do that. Right. Step. Give away everything he got. Yeah. And follow him. And follow him. Exactly. And he wasn't well. In order to have eternal life, it's just not about th- those ten commandments. It's all. It's about Jesus. And Jesus is not telling us um, to go ahead and ignore those. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Because we had an adultery story. We had a story about adultery. Do not steal. We had a story about the, the money changes in the in the temple. They were stealing from the people. You know what I'm saying? So he's not saying ignore the Ten Commandments, you know, but he is saying, I want you to look at the Ten Commandments, but also look at the people. So the commandment is love one another as I had loved you. Whatever you do for the people, you have to do it out of love or it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's hard to do stuff. It's sort of like, um, you know, that forgiveness thing we talk about. That's the hardest thing people can do. It, you know, they talk about love is hard. I don't know whether love is harder than forgiveness. Which one is hard? Forgiveness or love? Because you, you got to love everybody, even though they've done something horrible to you. So love and forgiveness kind of go the same. Am, am I correct? Yeah. They both are hard, but they both are required. Yes, they both are hard and they intertwine. You gotta love the person who done did you wrong. You gotta love and forgive that person. You gotta love them and forgive them. And that's the hard. When you look across the room and you all you can think about is what that person has done to you. That's all you can think about. You don't think about the love part. Why is that person here? And why do I have to look at that person? It's easier to forgive than it is to forget, though. You... It's easier to forgive and to forget? Yes. You I don't think you ever forget. But, you know, I I forget. forget. but I don't think you ever forget. Right. But, exactly. but just like we traveled, we traveled through John and we talked about the progression of faith. So love and forgiveness is a perpetual thing that we have to keep developing understanding so i don't think we're going to be to a point of finite and you know what i mean was that i've I got this love thing because your love can be challenged you know greater than what you experienced up until that point same thing about forgiveness you know we got to get ourselves to that place if i can be real about it you know and we looked at uh, that time when the guys killed the people at the south carolina church and the family came and immediately said, I forgive you. And folk was like, how can they forgive them? You know, right out the gate. So, you know, that's a thing that we have to develop to get to a certain point, but it's not going to end because it's an ongoing thing because it's, it's degrees of it. I think Valerie said something about love comes in degrees. You know, that's, that's it's no one set way we're going to grab it but it's a progression that we as humans have to get to that place. 
I might not can be in a, in a in a place where somebody done me wrong and I forgive them right off the bat. You know, I had to get to that place where then I can be at peace with myself saying I forgive you. Right. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. You have to do that, but you have to remember to forgive. If you can't forgive or don't forgive, aren't you outside of the will of God? Yeah. So right. be in the will of God, you have to learn to forgive. And you may not be able, like you say, those people did it immediately. We may not be able to immediately say, I forgive you. Right. But at some but point, we have to come to that. We'll right. To yes, we're not going where Jesus is going if we can't do that. And huh? say it again, going, We're not going to be where Jesus is if we can't do that. Right. Okay. So right. this commandment, love one another as I had loved you. Now, I want you to think about those apostles that he had with him. He said, as I had loved you. Talk, think about those 12 disciples. Think about them. 11. Okay. 11. Well, I'm going to say the whole 12. I'm going to say the whole 12. Judas. Think about what they all were and what they've done. Yeah. And if you, you think about it, you know, they've done. Peter is the one who says all kind of dumb things. Then you got the two ends who want to be the, on the right and the left. So, <laughs> You have Judas who, who definitely did, and all the stuff that in the constant times that they challenged him when he was helping people. You know, every time he helped people, and where did he find these people from? I mean, they weren't well educated, you know. They wouldn't have been at the, he had put them in the, uh, it's like he, he was the president and they were all his advisors. They came from nothing, but all of a sudden they right up front with the leader. How do you think they felt? egotistical their chest was all out there because they were at the top and they act like that along the way if you listen to them they were giving him, him advice telling him who to hang out with and who he shouldn't hang out with mm -hmm. you know so you know and he's telling them you're gonna love these people as i love you mm -hmm. and you put all your craziness and all your faults all the stuff the wrong things that you've done you have to love these other people the way I, even if they harm you, they go that love you and forgiveness part. There, I tell you, they are entwined. You cannot, you cannot love a person you can't forgive. You've got to love that person and forgive them. They both together. So you can forgive them all you want, but you also got to love them because if they, if they ever are down in anything, no matter what they've done to you, you have to go help them. If they're sick. <laughs> If they come to you financially, whatever you can do for that person, you have to do out of love, even though that person has stabbed you in the back 25 times. And if they have stabbed you in the back, what do you tell us to do about that? Forgive them 77 times. Yeah. Well, it, says, you know, it didn't say you have to like them. It said right. you have to love them. Exactly. And he said, turn the other cheek. He said, if you take, he gave, here's another example. If you take your coat, I mean, you know, give it, give it to them. You know, don't worry about none of that other stuff. Just love you. And you talk about somebody come in, you know, um, I'm down the church, you know, being youth minister all those years. I was in the church working when I, I was always at the church after work. And I come home one day, me and the girls come home and at my house is sitting open like a Christmas tree. All the lights are on, my front door is open. I'm not there. Nobody in my family's there. The police and everybody else in the neighborhood was in my house. Wow. Somebody had kicked my door in while I was at the church. Mm -hmm. And you talking about something that was the worst thing to me you could feel if you know that somebody has come up in your house, gone through your underwear, looking for stuff. Your stuff is all over the place. And, you know, what, what made them not steal that stuff? The girl across the street has saw them do it. And they knocked on the door, they didn't get an answer. And they, this was the before we had alarm systems, you know, and they kicked in the door and and the police caught them in the caught them in the house. One of them tried to climb through the little basement window in the bathroom, broke that window out, trying to get out of the house, but they got caught, you know, caught them in the house. But I'm telling you, my job, my job from then on was to forgive them and love them. But you know, let me tell you something. You're right, Michael. And it kind of took a while. I had to go to court. 
you know, it's it's and pay for my own door. Did they grow? Get an alarm system because the girls now are scared to be in the house alone now. You know what I'm saying? Scared yeah. to leave the house. You know? Yeah. You you know you you feel violated, and then now you're sitting here thinking, and God is saying, still you gotta love them as I love you. <laughs> you know that's what he's saying. And I'm sure you know that. Uh, but uh, he knows that takes a process, though, because because let's let's look at it this way. If I can be real again, right, that if I immediately say I forgive, but I'm not really feeling that in my heart, right. am I really being true to God? No. Right. Or true to myself? If if I'm really looking at myself in a real sense. Right. So so I can't bring myself to say that if I'm not really feeling it in my heart. But what helps every time we have conversation like this to be reminded that it's a process and it's going to take me a while to get to that point where I can turn the other cheek or, you know, give you took my shirt. I'm going to give you my coat, so to speak. But just being real and, and we have to be vulnerable. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's one thing to say the right thing, but if you're not really feeling that in your heart, then that what you're saying is in vain. Yes. Right. I so, wish I was, uh, I wish I was like, I wish I was like those people that have stopped and said, um, what made them, you know, look at them, you know, the, the young men that broke in the house and, and think about them and thought about, because some people do that. They have that compassion, even though it was done to them, they were, what made this person want to break in my house? You know, what was going through that person? What are the challenges in that person's life that made them go through that? I think that's, that would have been out of compassion and love for me to look at the other person. And at that time, I wasn't there to do that. I wasn't at that point in my life to look at the other person and say, is something going on with that person and maybe I could help. There are people who are like that. Yeah. Valerie, I think I interrupted you. I, I think the thought got, got through between what you said, what Michael said, it got through. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. No, I was just saying, I, I, I kind of went along with you because my house was also violated. And, you know, not just doing that, but to cover it up, they set it on fire. Oh, wow. And wow. that, I was saying, wasn't it bad enough that you broke in and then you tried to burn up what little I had left after you had done what you needed to do? And that was a process, like you say, of trying to, you know, come into that mindset of, you know, forgiving. Right. Well, I had an incident very similar to you guys, but instead of a crook, I had the police knock my door down and they had the wrong daggone house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they knocked the door down. They, they had cuffs on my grandson and I had alarm system. They wouldn't answer the phone or report that they were in the house. Wow. Mm. So, I had, go ahead. so I'm sure we've all had these challenges. And, and now that we're sitting here looking at this commandment, and I say to myself, how would I react differently today? I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. I know I've matured since then. I was a younger woman then. I don't know what I would, I would do, you know, today. But, and then we just have to remember sometimes that even today as our young people are running around this world, killing people, you know, Mm -hmm. Did anyone show love to them? I mean, how how was love exhibited to them? Was that was part of their ritual to kill somebody else, to show somebody else that they, you know, have someone love them if they harm somebody else? I mean, we don't even know what's going through their head. We know they're doing terrible things, mm -hmm. but we don't know. No one sat down and said, I have heard why they're doing this. Everything is, is learned behavior, mm -hmm. right? It's learned behavior. And, and going back to, to verse 12, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. And re remember, we talked about modeling love, right? So again, the whole journey with Jesus and his disciples 
he was modeling love to them. And so <clears throat> that love one another as I love you, I've been showing you what it means to be loved. What does love look like by me having compassion for other people, healing them? So if we look at babies, like they say, babies are, are born, you know, they don't know hate. They don't know love, but they come to learn it by you nurturing them as a mother or a father, right? right? And if you take the pattern to things that are bad, well, that's the learned behavior that you're modeling before them. All they do is repeat it, be it the bad words or the bad acts or good words or, or good deeds. It's yeah. learned behavior. So if we model, be it good or bad, then that's the product that you're going to get for those that follow you. You have to always say, you know, you, have, you live what you learn. Yeah. And everybody hasn't learned love or, or yeah. felt love or been loved. So it's kind of, you know, you got to gotta meet people where they are. Yeah. And then, you know. Um, yeah. Wherever that's you how I think. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I was going to say that when, when he talks about the things that, that caught me um, was then he started to call us um he said you you are my friends if you do what i command you so when you have a friend to me there's a mutual understanding that you would do for one another mm -hmm. so if jesus is laying down his life for us okay wait a minute we we, we ain't got that far yet we get ready to go there we get ready to go to 13 oh okay so we're getting ready to go to 13 and we say you can come in in a minute I think 13 is showing us, starting to begin to tell us, but it's also confusing. No one has greater love than this and to lay down for one's life for one's friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and he says, you're my friends if you do what I command you. Now, 13 is also confusing. So if Jesus didn't come to die, is what I'm saying, and uh, Father Rich need to be here for this one. Why is he telling them that? I think he's giving them, he's kind of giving them an exaggerated uh, example of this is how deep love goes. If you're willing to lay down, just as an example, you know, let's just say, hey, would you die for me? He's like, heck no, I don't know you that well. But but he's I think he's giving them, them an example of a stream like the 77 times seven, how many times should I forgive? Right. It's giving an example of an extreme. So if if I'm looking at that and say, uh, where is I'm at 13? Yeah. Uh no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Wow, that's a deep thing. You my friend. Well, I would die for you. Really? Would you? And I say, yes, you know, and you believe that that's that's taking that thing deep. Say, well, wow, he's willing to die for me. What does that say for him as a friend? Right. Mm -hmm. I just think it's in that sense of an extreme example of this is how deep that thing goes. Yeah. What were right. you saying? Going what, I, yeah. um, what I was saying is partly what uh, Michael had just finished saying, that when you have a friend, there's a mutual relationship with that friend. And um, what you expect, what you do, you pretty much would expect a friend to do because that's the close relationship that you have with that person. So if you're willing to lay down, if Jesus is willing to lay down his life for us, then what are we willing to do for him? What is that provoking in us? And I think for me, you have to have a strong faith in the person and a friend to do um, anything similar or close to what that person has done for you. So it's a question of, to me, it's a question of, of faith. Like I am, I am laying down, you know, there's no greater life than lay down my life. Then do you have enough faith in me to lay down your life not, not your physical life like as to die, but to be persecuted for anyone who, for, for unbelievers, for example, who tried to persecute you. Do you have 
that kind of faith in me to lay down your life. That's my point. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, and I agree with that. I believe he's telling them, hey, I'll lay down my life for you. Now, we'll, so will you be, I am your friend. You know, he's telling them what he plans to do. No one has greater love than this. He's letting them know he loves them. How much does he love him? How much do they yeah. love him? Right. I, I mean, I could have said it better. Um, you know, he, he's, now he's calling them his friends. And um, 15 says, he's saying that he's not calling them students. He's not calling them anything else. But now he, they know that they have this very close relationship with him. Closer than anyone else ever had. And he's calling them his friends. Mm -hmm. And this is what I do for the love of you because you're my friend. Mm -hmm. Because of, you know, our relationship. Yes. He says in 15, let me see if we can do something before we take off. He says in 15, I am no longer, I don't want to call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I've told you everything I have heard from my father. Awesome. And it was not you who chose me. Uh, let me let me skip that for a minute. I, I got to hold on because that's a whole different conversation. So when I looked this up, thank you, baby. When I looked this up and I went back, it in the in the Old Testament it it was showing that he in the Old Testament it was showing that God called them servants. He didn't, he didn't mm -hmm. say slave, but he called them servants. And now he's telling them that he's no longer even calling them a servant of his. He's calling them his friends. Yeah. yeah. He does not know what his master is doing. I have called you. Right. A slave don't know. He just he's just being commanded to do a chore. A slave is commanded to do a chore. He doesn't know that the over the, the uh, as Michael called it earlier, the blueprint. He haven't seen the blueprint. Mm -hmm. But if you are a friend of mine, I'm going to show you the blueprint. This is where we're going. And Jesus is telling, showing Michael that was the perfect way to start this. That he is showing them the blueprint. Mm -hmm. You know, you're my friends now. I can tell you the whole story. I can tell you the whole story. And that's what he's doing now. He's outlining the whole story for them. And now, uh, and then 16 is saying, it is not, it was not you who chose me. Right. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain. So that whatever you ask, the Father in my name, he may give you. And 17, this is, this I command you to love one. There you go. He ends that with love one another. But I like 16 because all of us included in 16. Mm -hmm. All of us are that included in 16 because we think that we went after God, but not really. We think we following, we went to follow Jesus on our own, but not mm -hmm. really. There was a call in each and every one of us, something he put in our hearts that made us be a part of this group. There is something he put in each and every one of us because we show up every week. No matter what's going on, we make time for this hour and a half every week. Mm -hmm. And that is not by chance. It's by choice. It's by choice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And I think too, D, that all of us uh, raise your hand if you've not been a sinner. But I believe all of us have been sinners. And still are. Uh, yes. No, I, you're right, Michael. It's Let me correct you. All of us are sinners, but um but but we're trying to understand continually the faith 
that we have in Jesus Christ or in Jesus. Um, we want to understand. We want to lead. We want to continue to be able to, at some point in our life, we learn to comfort others. We've learned some time in our life to teach others, even if it's our own children or our own family members and go outside of that. We've learned in our life, even through this Bible study and even today with Dee leading us and Father Rich, we've learned to correct some of our thinking. Um, we've learned to try and guide others. And I think as long as we continue to try to love God, that in Jesus will be his friend. Yes. That's what he was saying in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. That is exactly what he was saying. We're still in a pruning process. Right. Well, we're saved by grace. Yeah. Yes. I Can I say know. something in reference to 16? Mm -hmm. So so it says, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. Yes. And appointed you to go and bear fruit. Yes. That will remain. So one. At this point, again, you can see the setup. He is setting them up mm -hmm. to go out because, well, Jesus knows what the what the story, how that story is going to go. Right. But he set, he's setting them up to go forth, and he even said it that you will you will go and bear fruit that will remain. I stopped there on purpose, right? Are we that fruit that they bore? Of course, we are. Which means that that Jesus's love still remains and it remains in us. So just the way I'm looking at it, that this is how this has transcended time, yeah. right? Yeah. Because now we have to be uh, the, the, the vine or the fruit, continue to model love, righteousness, all of the fruits of the spirit as best we can so that 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 fruit will remain which means when i say remain meaning you're teaching somebody you're modeling it that then they will take that and transcend time, mm -hmm. as time goes on yes exactly you, you said all that perfectly yes, yes. yes. And, and, and it has they you're right it has it has uh stand the test of time because without him saying this without them doing that we wouldn't be here today uh yeah to learn what he, he wants us to learn. I mean, we wouldn't be here. And we are the they, we are them. We, we are, are those, them. we are the, we are the fruits of those 12 that he chose, but now it's been multiplied, you know. But we and also we, have been chose. And yes. We multiplied again, because he says, go and make disciples. He didn't say, stop where you are. You done taught enough people. He said, keep on going. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you can never, you can never be in a situation where there's uh, not enough people to save or heal. Right. Or this, is or job. this is your and, job until and you die. Sick. And, and watch this. The day you die, it's like Jesus no, did. That's right. The day <laughs> you die, you, you're job. working on saving, watch this. healing yeah. the lost and the sick. Now he said, "Bear fruit that will remain, right?" Yes. And if we need, and if we need help, what did he say? Whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give. So we've got help. We've got help, and we talked about the Advocate well, right, just before these. Talk more about so, that again in the next uh, in the next one. We're going to get you today when Father Rich come back next week. I guess he's coming back. He always throws little emails at me, you know, like, "Oh, I didn't look at my calendar." Yeah. But the, this right. commandment, he says, to love one another. It's all about us loving, out of loving one another. We we have to look beyond each other's faults and see their needs. Right. How else will we have each other? We got to look beyond each other. The way they look, the way they smell, the way they talk. It's you know, and somehow I feel that when things are going today, some of us. We all haven't done our jobs because right now the fruit is not doing its job. It's not, I, I don't know how to say, it's just running rampant. 
And it's like, if you, we talk about the joy of God and if the joy of God is in us and the love of God is in us, then some of the things that is happening, we wouldn't want to do. And I, I think that's what it is. We, our love has to be everywhere. And, you know, even though you hear that on the news, our love has to be in our jobs and our every being in our walk of life. Just because we're a policeman, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't have compassion for the person that committed the crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, what people's trying to say when they're saying Black Lives Matter. I think they're trying to say is, I'm not saying to you that this person shouldn't have ran the red light or shouldn't have tried to rob that store. But you have to look at that person with compassion and love and treat that person like a human being. You know, mm -hmm. instead of beating the heck out of them and seeing them suffer, that is not what you're supposed to do. That is not what God is asking us to do. So we have to walk our love everywhere and every yeah, part yeah. of life that we're in. And I think that's what he's trying to say. And we're not doing that. So mm -hmm. if we're showing the world, this is how you react when, you know, to people, then we haven't done our job. We haven't learned the thing. And we know that, you know, we got people who sit in church and go out and do something different. But the part of it is we have to continue to show these people that what God's love is. Right. I, that's that's, that's the thing. We have to continue to bear the good fruit, right? Right. Bear right. the good fruit. And 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 one thing too, um, you know, it's it's good when we come together like this, right? Because it's it's also good to be vulnerable, right? Nobody has all of the answers. And so I could be wrong, it's two left shoes, but in this forum, you know, I'm okay putting myself out there because if, if I get corrected or somebody shows me or tells me the proper way, then I've learned something. So, so you know, it's good to be vulnerable because that's being real. And we learn in our vulnerabilities, right? right? And so the world also shows us what we're up against, you know? So we have to be determined to keep exhibiting the good fruit until such a day we might be gone, but such a day that thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, you know? But will we see that? That's where faith comes in because we might not be around to see that materialize, but to know that the fruit that I bore was good fruit before the Lord Jesus Christ. And that I know I was doing my best to exhibit that good fruit, to model it, that I could have an effect or an impact, you know, on the world, one person at a time. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to stop right there. I took the, and let me hit the stop recording button. Okay.